Pastor Mark Buto, and this is the Higher Things Video Catechism. The Table of Duties to Bishops, Pastors, and Preachers. In the Table of Duties, we talk about vocation, that is, our callings that God gives to us. And God gives different people different callings. Sometimes it's helpful to think of a calling as a way in which God is serving others through us. For example, parents are the way that God provides for us food and clothing and shelter and so on when we're born and when we grow up and so on. The first vocation that the Table of Duties addresses are bishops, pastors, and preachers. In other words, those whom God has called to be our servants to deliver to us the gifts of Jesus Christ, to deliver to us his word, to baptize, to administer the sacrament of Christ's body and blood, to give us teaching and counsel according to God's word. So pastors are called by God and they stand in the stead and by the command of Jesus Christ to give us the forgiveness of sins that Jesus won for us on the cross. Or to think of it another way, on the cross, on Calvary, Jesus accomplished our salvation, but then through the office of the holy ministry, through bishops, pastors, and preachers, through our pastors, Christ delivers that salvation to us. So what do we know about pastors? What are they supposed to do? What are they supposed to be like? What is their job? The Table of Duties gives us a few Bible verses to talk about that. Now, there are lots of verses in the scriptures that deal with the pastoral ministry, that deal with the office of the holy ministry that Jesus instituted and called and ordained men to be a part of. But the verses that the Catechism highlights come to us from pastoral epistles written by St. Paul. Paul wrote three pastoral epistles to Timothy, two to Timothy, first and second Timothy, and one to Titus. And both Timothy and Titus, you can read about in the book of Acts, they were pastors who were ordained. Paul had known them and he set them up as pastors over the flocks, the churches to whom he had preached the gospel. And so he gives advice and counsel and direction on what it is they're supposed to be like and what it is they're supposed to be doing. Let's read the first one together. The overseer must be above reproach. The husband of but one wife, temperate, self-controlled, respectable, hospitable, able to teach, not given to drunkenness, not violent but gentle, not quarrelsome, not a lover of money. He must manage his own family well and see that his children obey him with proper respect. That's from 1 Timothy 3, 2 through 4. The word that Paul uses there, episkopos, which comes out as overseer or bishop, that means that the pastor is the one through whom the Lord visits his people. And so as the representative of Christ, as the one who's in the stead and by the command of Christ, Paul sets forth some requirements for the office of the holy ministry. He says pastors should be married to one wife, they shouldn't be drunks or quarrelsome and so on. And so he simply sets some guidelines, some rules for which we try to follow as we place men into the office of the holy ministry. So not just anyone becomes a pastor, but we look to the Lord for guidance through his apostle as to what makes a pastor and what those requirements are, how they should live their life, conduct their affairs, and so on, how they're looked at by others, and so that they are fitted or suitable for the office of the holy ministry, for the job of preaching and teaching and delivering Christ's gifts. The second one, let's read it. He must not be a recent convert, or he may become conceited and fall under the same judgment as the devil. 1 Timothy 3, verse 6. This requirement has to do with a pastor being educated in God's word, having been trained up in God's word. Now, as a pastor, there may be a temptation to say, wow, look at me, I'm a pastor, I'm in, I'm in the place of God, I'm, I'm, I'm super important and, and great and everything. And so we don't want that conceitedness to fall upon the pastoral office. And so we don't tell a, a new convert, say, wow, you're, you're a really great Christian, you should be a pastor. But rather, through much training and uh, instruction, then they become pastors. Because when it comes down to it, ultimately, the pastoral office is not about the man who fills it. That's why pastors wear robes, for example. The pastoral office is about Christ and the gifts that he's giving to his people through the pastor that he calls and ordains. So Paul says, not a recent convert, but rather let him simply be about the business of Christ's work. Let's read. He must hold firmly to the trustworthy message as it has been taught, so that he can encourage others by sound doctrine and refute those who oppose it. This verse has a lot to do with what the pastor is supposed to be doing. That is, he takes the word of God and through preaching and teaching, 
comforts people with the sound doctrine, that is, the saving gospel of Jesus Christ and the forgiveness of sins, the guidance and instruction of God's law, and he also refutes those who oppose it. So pastor has an important job. He's comforting God's people with the word of God, but he's also using the word of God to refute those who have errors and those who teach falsely and those who would draw people's attention away from Christ and the forgiveness of sins and the salvation that he brings. So you notice with these Bible verses about pastors, there's a couple of things going on. First of all, for the pastors themselves, we see how it is we're supposed to be, the requirements for our office, and what we're supposed to be doing as pastors. So pastors can look at this and say, well, you know, I maybe, maybe dropped the ball here, or maybe haven't been doing this as well as I should. So the table of duties, because it does teach us the law, is teaching us how to be pastors. And so it's teaching us also where we make mistakes, where we fall into sin, and so there's some repentance for us for when we go to confession. But it's also guiding us. So when we wake up in the morning and say, all right, I'm a pastor today. What am I going out in the world to do? I don't just make up a bunch of busy work, but rather be diligent about the word of God and delivering the comfort of sound doctrine to God's people through his word. But then it also serves for those who aren't pastors, namely for the church, to see how we train pastors, how we look at pastors, what men are required to be or what qualifications they have for the office of the holy ministry. So the table of duties kind of does double duty because it's teaching those who have this particular vocation, in this case pastors, what they're supposed to be about, but it's also teaching those who have the authority to call pastors, like the church, and say, well, what are the requirements there? And so we see how we might teach others what it means to be a pastor and what pastors uh, have as their qualifications, requirements, and as their job. And so there are the qualifications, there are the duties of the pastors, given us by the table of duties, told to us by St. Paul writing to Timothy, Pastor Timothy and Pastor Titus, and so reminding us that the pastor's job is to, above all to give us Jesus, to be the one who is in the stead and by the command of our Lord Jesus Christ, delivering us forgiveness of sins and all the salvation that Jesus won for us on the cross. And next time, we'll take a look at the hearers, that is those who hear the preaching of the gospel, those who hear the preaching of the preachers, and what is their responsibility, especially for taking taking care of their preachers. That's next time. I'm Pastor Mark Buteau, and this has been another episode of the Higher Things Video Catechism.